Thanks, Zach. Thanks to Zach for organizing this. Um, hopefully everybody can uh, see my slides, but today I'm going to be talking about designing a dynamic generative mental health chatbot using AI. The work that motivates this is really um, all of the work that's been done in uh, digital mental health intervention or digital therapeutics regarding engagement. So these apps can be effective, but um, as David just mentioned, um, a drop-off happens rapidly uh, generally. And uh, so we've, uh, I've been really trying to get into uh, intervention types that don't necessarily carry as much of that problem. Uh, one, uh, one strategy that many folks have tried to uh, employ, and uh, this includes our, myself, um, is essentially moving towards chatbots. Uh, and this, this work evolved to essentially taking what were um, treatment manuals uh, that were delivered in person, those were delivered on over the internet, and then uh, these chatbots are essentially breaking some of the same content down, some of the same ideas that uh, were created before uh, into smaller chunks, try to make them more engaging. Uh, chatbots have a lot of different forms. I think the predominant thing that you'll see within mental health and in customer service and in pretty much most areas is something that I call author chatbots. Uh, essentially, these are taking uh, like this content and delivering it in chunks and you then pair it with some kind of if-then statement. Um, so it's a routing, right? So you have some predefined conversation that you have already written uh, as an author and uh, then you put this up based on this if-then uh, statements. The major problem, and I've used these chatbots, I'm knocking my own work here, um, is uh, we've developed these kinds of things and tested them. The problem is you really can't anticipate what folks will actually say. Um, language is incredibly fluid. People use it differently. And uh, so we often can't think of the right routing options. And in doing that, you might have encountered this in customer service before. I find it to be the most frustrating experience ever when I'm experience, uh, work, talking to a chatbot and it doesn't anticipate uh, what I want. Uh, and so uh, it might be things like uh, uh, please, the chatbot says, please select an option above. Let me see the main menu. Please select an option above. See original options. Uh, please select an option above, go back to all choices. And it just doesn't understand or, or get it. So the, the routing options, really, I, I think fundamentally the problem is this is not conversation. This is not conversational. And so uh, there have been major advances um, in the ability to produce contextual information that's not specific to mental health um, within the past two years with these large language models. Um, and th these are all based on deep learning. Fundamentally, they really learn by repeated exposure to concepts, these models do, much kind of like a child would. So they learn by example. And they can ge generate these contextualized dynamic responses based on a user's input. So it actually allows for conversation um, rather than some kind of predefined options. Um, so can actually mimic what a human might be. So we've tried to develop a mental health chatbot uh, to actually uh, do something that might be therapeutic. These generative chatbots work uh, based on deep learning. And the, again, they work by example. So kind of like a baby might when they're entering the world. They don't uh, necessarily understand things intuitively until they learn through repeated exposure of concepts of what's happening. So we did this uh, in a lot of different ways. You'll see some of the examples that we've tried to train our deep learning models on. Um, but uh, some of them went poorly, and then we'll talk about ones that uh, went better over time. So our first thought was, oh, let's do the low-hanging fruit. There's this massive amount of corpus of uh, huge amounts of data of self-help kind of forums, Reddit, all self-help forum content across the, uh, the web, uh, and uh, that type of exposure has been helpful for uh, peer support can be a helpful component for mental health. Let's start there. Let's see if we could just use uh, peer support as uh, the kind of the gold standard response uh, that uh, we were delivering. And this did not go well. Um, so we tried uh, something, uh, for example, an input to the chatbot, I'm feeling depressed, sometimes I don't 
get uh, want to get out of bed in the chat bar responding life is such a struggle most days i don't know how i have the energy to go on i end up wanting to cry alone in the corner i just want my life to be over these kinds of responses were contextual which is a good but very different from what we were hoping for because they're peers and so ultimately we thought okay uh, peers are not going to maybe be what the direction we were hoping for. Let's do something else. Let's try what the whole field has been doing for, you know, over a century. Let's go with psychotherapy and we'll just use psychotherapy transcripts. So we collected like hundreds of thousands of lines of psychotherapy transcript data and we fed them into a machine learning or deep learning models and this is kind of what happened. They learned all of the bad habits of a psychotherapist, but not much of the good ones. And so uh, the similar input, I'm feeling depressed. Sometimes I don't want to feel like uh, getting out of bed. The chatbot responds, mm-hmm, go on. And uh, after they say, what do I think I should do? And I don't want, uh, I don't know what to say. I want, uh, want some help. And then uh, some kind of, uh, we observed or repeated patterns where it would make interpretations about uh, parental relationships causing the current problems without context. So clearly also not what we were hoping for. So we started um, a, long, a, a few years ago starting to realize that the data is the big part of the problem. So we started developing curated expert content that was based on empirically supported treatment components but in the form that we want it. Um, so uh, we really just found out we needed to build it ourselves. Data was not the problem, or data was essentially the problem and we can't take the easy way out in terms of a solution. We started um, evaluating our chat box early on. I won't even show you how bad the uh, chat bot responses were from the self-help data. Our psychotherapy transcripts produced very poor uh, or poor data and responses that were not very clinically appropriate. But as we started to build uh, curated expert content, these models started doing better. And we learned, uh, learned how to approach this better over time. And now the, the last time we, we actually did a big inventory check on this was, was several months ago. Um, and at that point we were about three quarters of responses. I would, I would guess it's probably over nine cents at this point. Uh, I'll show you an example um, of our, our interface we call Therabot. Um, it is got a, a little bit under the hood that makes this little guy possible, uh, but essentially it's, uh, I'll show you the input, I can't stop worrying. Um, and then the response, again, this is dynamic. We did not tell it to say this. It says, I'm sorry to hear that. What are some thoughts that you're worrying about right now? So that really responding to what the content was in something that is trying to gather more information to be used further in the conversation in the future. And so the response that the user says, I'm, I'm worried about, I'm not uh, going to finish my homework, that I'll fail my class, that I'll flunk out of school and that I'll end up without a job. And it says, that sounds like a lot to deal with uh, all at once. Have you talked to anyone about these fears? And then it goes on and continues to, to talk about and does further assessment and then pairs this with intervention. And this is exactly how we tried to train our models is to try to do assessment followed by intervention, much like we might if someone was entering a conversation with a therapist. So uh, that's, that's my brief snapshot of what we've been working on. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to talk about the technical details. Thanks to everyone in my lab for making this work possible. Uh, we're about to launch into some, uh, a few different RCTs across a few different diagnostic groups. And I'm really excited about the promise of this work. All right, thanks.